Hey YouTube, let's jump into the Ultimate Spider-Man number one. Uh, there has been a lot of hype around this book, so uh, let's see what it's all about. So there is a little um, prelude here. We can read that uh, to you. 20 years ago, the maker prevented a radioactive spider from biting a young Peter Parker. He likewise prevented the creation of any other superhero and formed a secret council to rule the world from the shadows. When Tony Stark learned the dark history of the universe, he sought to undo it, prompting the Maker's Council to attack Manhattan, killing thousands, and frame Stark for it. Peter Parker has lived his life unaware of the Maker's Council or the truth behind the spider, but that is about to change. So obviously we're jumping into a you know ultimate universe, right? A different uh, uh, universe, different storyline than we've seen before. Um, so let's jump in. Well, let's take a look at the creative team as well. Um, this is a Jonathan Hickman story and Mark, Marco Cicchetto, um art and color, Mark Wilson lettering, uh, Corey Petit. So, um, but we see, we jump right in and we see, um, you know, an, a little bit older Peter Parker. He's got the beard um, and he's kind of getting ready for his day. And we see that, you know, he's with his family. He has a son and a daughter. Um, and, um, you know, he mentions uh, mom, Mary Jane. And so we see, you know, they're kind of this, this happy family. But there's something that is um, kind of gnawing at Peter Parker. So um, he's, you know, he's a little, a little unsettled. And then we see him at the Daily Bugle. And we see Jay Jonah. Um, and we see Betty, um, Betty Brandt. So uh, we're seeing all of the, the same, you know, it, it, it's a different universe, but we're seeing all of the familiar characters, um, with Peter Parker. But then we get this big reveal. Um, we see Ben, Ben Parker, uncle Ben, um, is alive. Uh, and so that really is going to change things obviously in this, uh, in this storyline. And we see that Ben is working at the Bugle uh, as well with uh, J. Jonah and, and Peter. And so Peter and Uncle Ben, Ben, are off to a uh, some type of event. And we see J. Jonah kind of uh, give his tie to Peter that he needs to be a little bit more uh, formal for the event that he's going to. And we, <clears throat> we see Ben and Peter, you know, having this conversation and, you know, they're talking about Aunt May. Aunt May has passed away in this universe. Um, and part of the event that we read in the opening, um, she was one of the people from New York that had passed away in the in the event. And so this is kind of, I guess, a memorial that's happening um, to remember all of the people that were lost. And we see um, Matt Murdock as the priest. And again, now, you know, because of um, in this universe, the, the, some of the heroes weren't, didn't become heroes. We're still seeing familiar characters, but they're just not in their hero form. And Matt introduces Harry Osborn. And he's there to say a few words about his family, Norman, um, and a few others that were killed along uh, with May Parker. Uh, and then... You know, we, we see them still talking a little bit about the event here, you know, Peter with his family, and then they go back to the bugle, and there's something going on at the bugle. Uh, J. Jonah has quit. And we see that, you know, in the boardroom, um, they are discussing the future of the, the paper, um, and they want, and, and we actually see a fam another familiar face here, um, Robbie Robertson. Uh, and there is a board meeting and, and they're looking to make some changes and they want Ben, you know, to take over. And then in we see walks in the kingpin and he's kind of behind it, um, assuming he's got some financial interest in um, the Daily Bugle. And Ben has nothing to do with it and he quits as well. And so we see Ben and J. Jonah walking out. And that's an interesting, you know, pair to have those two together. Um, and I think that's going to make for a good storyline. We see the kingpin leaving um, the paper, the office, and 
as he gets in his car, the car is, um, you know, blows up, explodes, and in comes the Green Goblin. Now, we can only assume that this is Harry Osborn because Dorman Osborn uh, has supposedly had been killed in, in some of these events. And so we can only assume that is Harry or some other Green Goblin. But I'm sure that will unfold in the next couple issues. And then we see Ben and uh, Jay Jonah at a bar and they're kind of contemplating their you know next move. And they're actually thinking about starting their own paper and going into business together. So pretty interesting. Um, and Peter finally shows up. Um, and, you know, he basically has, um, I'm trying to remember if he actually quit his job. Um, no, I don't think he did. But um, so Ben and uh, Jay Jonah kind of fill him in on their plans um, about starting their own paperwork or own paper. <laughs> uh, J. Jonah exits, and then we have this conversation between Peter and Uncle Ben. And, you know, Peter's basically explaining to him that something's missing from his life. He's felt that way for a long time. Uh, and Ben gives him some advice, basically saying, you know, not taking any action, you know, inaction is, is a bad thing. You need to kind of take the leap. And so... You know, Peter heads home and, he, and he's having this kind of heart to heart with Mary Jane and basically saying something's off. And Mary Jane's worried that it's something about her, but it, it, it's not. It's something within Peter. And he's he's kind of opening up to her, telling her, you know, what's going on. And then, you know, we see, you know, she basically reassures him that he needs to go, you know, kind of go for it. And we see Peter out on um, the roof of their apartment building. Uh, and he's holding some type of um, ball or orb in his hands. And we see this kind of flashback where, you know, he saw um, this device show up, this little package. And um, there's this flashback from Tony Stark. And basically Stark reveals to him all of the, you know, events that have led up to this point and why he feels like something's missing, that he's not Spider-Man. And we cut back to the present and we see him holding that orb and he and he opens it up and we see that um, the spider, the radioactive spider that initially had bit him and, and turned him into Spider-Man. But obviously in this universe that hasn't happened, but Tony Stark is trying to make that happen. And boom, we ultimately see that he does get bit and we see him from the shadows here. So uh, interested to see where this goes. But why all the hype around this book? And, you know, from, from a longtime Spider-Man reader and Spider-Man fan, I have to say it's the story I think that most Spider-Man fans wanted, right? They wanted to see a, a little bit older, mature Peter Parker with MJ, with a family. Uh, and I think we got that. We got that initially, right? We've got, we, in the first couple pages, you see he's with, he's with MJ. He has a family. Um, you know, I think the Uncle Ben thing is a twist. Having Uncle Ben now in the mix, I think that will certainly change things over Aunt May. I mean, they're both, you know, from what we knew of Uncle Ben, they're both were strong characters. Obviously, Aunt May has been very strong over the years supporting Parker. And now, you know, I think having Uncle Ben um kind of the father figure will be will be really I think really different. I think it'll it'll add a little bit of a twist to the story. So I think that's why longtime fans really, why this thing just kind of exploded because of the storyline. It's a storyline we've wanted and, and have been waiting for uh, and have not been getting in some of the other Spider-Man books. So I think that's why this um, took off. It's, it's well-written. Um, artwork is, is really good. Um, somebody mentioned uh, John's comics with kids mentioned that the story was a little flat and like not much happened and i and i i, I agree to um i i agree with that but like i said i think for those if you're not a long time spider-man fan you may really feel that way if you are the other side i think that you would think this book really it's the story you wanted and so you're going to soak this in um so that's that's what i got for you i mean i you know we do a review system here five webheads 
I'm going to go four and a half for this. Uh, I think I thought it was off to a great start. Um, I'm not sure if I'm going to continue to review these. I'm al already reviewing ASM and Miles and a few other books. But, you know, if this story continues to be uh, as good as issue one for me, I will certainly continue to review these. But let me know. Let me know down in the comments what you thought of this book. Um, did you read it? You know, what did you think of the story? Do you, you know, do you think my description of why it's been success so successful or people are gravitating towards it is because of the, you know, the the Parker family dynamic that we're seeing? And I, like I said, I think it's a storyline that uh, most Spider-Man readers, longtime readers, really wanted and has just really never have gotten. So let me know. Appreciate you watching. We'll see you for the next review.